Welcome, and thank you for joining us today as we discuss two tools we hope will make your professional life a little easier and maybe even a little bit more fun. We are, of course, talking about BNC Catalyst and Lone Stars, as it says in the title, but for libraries, which narrowed it on this talk by a good two hours. So let's get started. If you're new to Catalyst, you're probably wondering, what is Catalyst? Well, Catalyst is an online catalog tool that helps you discover and obtain information on current and forthcoming books. What this means for librarians is that by logging into the system, you can not only browse through title lists and new publisher catalogs, but you can also get sneak peek and interior artwork, you can read excerpts, you can download guides, and access all the free tools that we've developed for libraries. You'll be able to see data like comparable title suggestions for forthcoming titles, you can export catalog data to Excel spreadsheets or to basic MARC format records, and you can create your own custom catalog list using any titles you find on the site. Uh, you can even request reading copies and recommend titles for Lone Stars. Huh? Um, full Catalyst accounts are completely free for library staff, and all you need to do is sign up. And so now we're going to hazard a guess that the next question on your mind is, what is Lone Stars? We're glad you asked. Lone Stars is a reader advisory tool that library staff are able to participate in through Catalyst. We want Canadian library staff from all over the country to answer with this one question every month. What forthcoming books do you think are essential for Canadian libraries? We take your answers, we tally them up, and release top 10 picks for both juvenile and adult books, and we've released these just before the books themselves are published. So this may seem like a very big question that you probably think only collection librarians should handle, but we don't think so. Running a library is a team sport, and we think someone who professionally immerses themselves in a world of books each and every day and has close ties to a local community has the knowledge that we seek. What books do you think that woman who comes in every Thursday is going to go after, or uh, children on a class trip who get to use their library cards for the very first time? Are too many books coming to mind? That's perfect! Because with Lone Stars, you can recommend as many titles as you wish, but you can only recommend each title once. But those are the specifics. Let's get back to the basics and begin with Catalyst. So welcome to Catalyst. If you have an account, you can sign in here, or you can sign in here. And if you don't have an account, you can register for a free one here, and over here. We ask for the most basic of information, but we do ask that you provide your work email address. That is the email address that's associated with your library system. And you include the name of that library system here, um, as opposed to the just the branch. So you hit create my account. That sends to us. We validate and ensure that you're added to the correct account on our end. And that will give you access to library features. So let's pretend you're already done and we're ready to sign in. So let's sign in. Ta-da! Extra content! So as you can see, I'll just log out again so you can see the difference. This is what we'll, you will see if you just land on Catalyst. So this is public facing. However, when you log in as a library user, you are given extra access. So these books are actually marked trade only, which is why they're appearing on a library feed and not the public. But as you can see, there's a whole lot of information happening right here. So let's just kind of break this down a little bit. So when you first come on, you'll see recent drop-ins. Drop-ins are books that have been added to published catalogs. So these are books that were added to a new season. These were books that were picked up at a later date um, or moved from season to season. Um, so these are books that the publisher wants to make sure is, are not lost in the shuffle. So you'll see these here. And of course, you can go through the carousel and you can search for upcoming by month here. So let's see what's happening actually in November. And you'll see here that we now have a list of books publishing in November 2019. But let's go back to the home page. Below that, you will see books that are actually releasing this week. So you can keep track of what's coming out and the same functionality applies. We have a carousel and we have the same sort of by search. And on the bottom here, we have the newest catalogs. And you'll see here, this is what's coming uh, by region or by season, whatever the uh, publisher needs to share. And you can find, again, by clicking the view the latest, you'll be given a list. So that is there. But of course, again, a lot of information. What if you're looking for specific content? Well, we have that too. 
depending on what your criteria is, you can actually choose to set your favorite so you can follow along. So let's go here and let's choose, let's see. Do, 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 do. Let's do Simon and Schuster. So we've added them on. And you'll see now these are books that Simon and Schuster will be publishing or have recently dropped in, I should say, in the future. And these are books releasing this week and the newest catalogs, depending on what I've chosen. So it's just kind of a, a quick and fun way to keep track of everything and make sure that you always see the content that you want. So speaking of actually searching for publishers, you can use this box on the left-hand side to find a publisher or an imprint quite quickly. You can scroll through or you can start typing the name. So let's say we're looking for Greystone Books. Oh, there they are. And this will take you to their publisher page. And on here, you'll see all of their catalogs um, and all of their past catalogs, if you'd like to look in their archives. Um, you'll also find links to contact them. So you'll see their social media links. You'll see a link to their website. And of course, you'll find their mailing address. So all that information um, can be supplied if the publisher has added it. So let's go back. And of course, you can always find individual titles uh, by using our quick search. And you can do ISBN, you can do title, you can do author, you can do genre. And if you're looking for forthcoming books, you can always uh, go over to the Lone Star page, which is linked to here, and you'll find monthly catalogs divided by genre for potential books that are still eligible for Lone Stars, which we'll cover a little bit later. Now, if you're interested on sort of keeping track of, of really anything on Catalyst, you can, of course, go to my page and make some catalogs. So my page is a fount of personalized information. You'll be able to see all the changes that have occurred since you've left. So under here, under alerts and updates, uh, you'll see how many drop-in titles have been added, as mentioned earlier, um, that is titles added to published catalogs, and alerts on new notes or bibliographic data updates for elements that you can track. And this is incredibly useful if you're keeping an eye on slipping pub dates. So if you click in, you will see a more robust list that you can go through and then you can clear the history by clicking the X. And you can customize these settings from uh, these alerts, I should say, from your settings page, and we'll come to that in a little while. But for now, let's focus on some catalogs. Okay, so you'll see here that there are two types. These are custom catalogs that you've created. So in this account, we've created this, uh, these catalogs, and these are the ones that have been received from colleagues, so other user, Catalyst users that are a part of your account. So you can share lists between the two, and it's you can add notes and all sorts of fun stuff. But we should probably start with how to actually make one. Let's say, for the purposes of this demonstration, you have some reluctant readers out there, and you really, 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 really want to uh, put together a personal list for them. So let's start by finding a book. So we'll put in early reader, and you can scroll down. And I'm going to say, ooh, so if you click onto someone, let's say it's Aunt Nasty, uh, strikes your fancy as she struck mine. There's two ways you can do this, actually. You can click in if you're doing in bulk. Let's say we're going to add the worst wizard to, we'll keep a theme. And we'll add to catalog. And if there's a catalog here that you've already created, you can just add it in right there, or you can create a brand new one. So let's give this a name. Let's pretend this is for someone named Lucy. Lucy's uh, reading list, and we're going to create that catalog. And you can keep scrolling through, and you can keep finding and adding books to this catalog. So let's also add the magic sword, because thematics. You can also actually click into the individual title page, and it will also have that add to catalog button, and you can just add it in. Okay, let's go back. These are all books that have published. As you can see, this published in July of 2016. This was May 2015. Um, but we're more interested in books that are publishing, are just forthcoming. So I'm going to redo the search here. OK, and we're going to add under the lilacs. Beautiful. So we'll click in. And you'll notice that this is also a book that is eligible for Lone Stars because it has the button. So we're going to add it to our list because we want Lucy to make sure she sees it. And I mean, if you're here, you can always, always recommend. You just click on here, and I'll take you through that later. So let's say that is we've got a few books for her, and that's, that's what we want to do. So let's go back to my page, and we'll check out the actual catalog that we've created. So you can actually do a little shortcut. This will take you to, so if you click here, it will take you to the catalog. Let's go back here. 
Uh, if you click here, it will take you to the editing features. So you can add info, you can add ISBNs directly here by cutting and pasting into it. Um, you can add a cover image if you so like. Let's pretend. Say it's got a cooking. You can add front and end matter and end pages. So front matter is basically just a little blurb that publishers can add in or you if you so like uh, that says sort of what this catalog is uh, for, any thematic things. Some publishing houses use it to explain the types of books that they publish. If you're using this for a patron, you could add a little note, sort of like a PDF upload that said like, hi Lucy, this is for you. Um, and end pages are similar. This are a way to sort of add in auxiliary information. Sometimes it's a checklist or order form or whatever you would add to a regular catalog. And we'll come to those a little later. Uh, you can also organize uh, the order. So if you so choose, we have drag and drop. So you can drag this down. And you'll see here it's highlighted because that means that it's changed. And you'll see here, so this is where it is currently, and this is the number that it was in current. It was in two before, but we moved it down. Uh, you can actually send this to the front, the back. You can send it any number. So let's say we wanted to send it to four, and all of a sudden it's moved. And you'll see here this is updated as well. It used to be a four, now it's a three. You can remove by clicking this X. You can restore it by clicking with the other arrow. You can remove all of them or restore all of them. You can even sort by, uh, let's do it by publication date. So you'll see here that now everything is moved and you can save all this and now it is the lay of the land. So now we can actually do a few more things because we've come to the publishing stage. So you can share your custom catalogs with your colleagues, uh, whether or not they've opted into the directory. If they are part of your account, you will be able to manage your contacts. So you can go here and I'll explain that a bit later. So all you have to do is start typing in their name and you add them and then you have to make sure you click save. Excellent. And there you go. And then you can send it. Um, and they can just receive an email notification uh, if you decide to send that. So you can send that now or do not send. So I just sent an email notification. There, and you're published. Okay, but we're going to go back to our main view. So that's how you share it digitally. But if you wanted to share it physically, and we would recommend this if you want to use this for desk info, uh, like to have on the circulation desk, to hand it out to patrons, to just have it around and so you can make physical notes on it. We have a PDF option. So here with the PDF symbol, you click on that. And here we have pre-templates. So these are ones that have been created in the account. These are the default. So you can either do it by one. So every page will be one book. Pages will be a list of books or they will be in title view. So you can fit more that way. So we're gonna do it single. And so if I click that, it's a predetermined template. All it has to do is download. And you can see it going here. And of course, if you're still working, you can hide it. There we go. So let's see. So this is uh, Lucy's reading list. And here you'll see the table of contents. And then we'll have the information. So this is the default information. You've got a description. You have your basic bibliographic data on the side. And you can see it's taken up one. And there is a barcode if available and some reviews. Now, if this is not to your liking and you'd like to change it up a bit, we can do that. So if we go back here and we hit manage templates. This will lead you to your template finder and you can actually share templates between colleagues as well. So if you create one and you'd like to make this the standard usage for your library and for all the reading lists that you, you create, you can do that. So we're just gonna create one now. So let's make a list this time because lists are fun. So I didn't give it a name, but I should give it a name now. So we're going to call it Lucy's List. So I'm going to save that. Um, and we're going to customize. Uh, so this is what the basic is. Now, the more information you add, the less space there will be. So everything has a predetermined space. So if the description uh, for a particular book is longer than most, it's going to be cut off because there's only so much space given. If you want to make sure that it's the description is given in its whole, you would put less bibliographic information. You can customize from here. So you'll see here we have some layout options. So let's say I only want three books a page. 
and I don't really want the dimensions, but I do definitely want illustrations. I want Bizac, audience range, yep, I don't need carton quality. Distributor, nope, I want an expanded description. Uh, I want the headline, I don't really care about price or product form. I do want the publication date, definitely want to know if it's Canadian. Anyway, so these are my choices, and I hit preview. And so this is what the new one will look like. As you can see, because I've reduced a, a book, it has now given me more space. However, contributor bio is going to be pretty much cut off. So I'm actually going to take contributor bio off. I'm going to preview that again, and that's much cleaner. And then I'm going to save and go back to templates. So as you can see, now this is part of my regular template. If I go back to my page, and I click into Lucy's reading list. And here it is, so I'm gonna choose that. And now my default template is being used to create a brand new PDF. It's very exciting. Yay! I like it. So you can now print this out and you can use it at the reference desk, as I said, or you can incorporate it into newsletters. Um, it is good to go. Okay, let's circle back a bit. So uh, remember when we we're adding uh, all these forthcoming titles into our catalog, and I believe Under the Lilac was our chosen. As you can see, the recommend button is right there. So this means that this has the opportunity to become a Lone Star pick. Now, there are eligibility rules, and for the most part, if a button appears, it's because they've passed those eligibility rules. Um, so what is a Lone Star pick? So Lone Star Picks must be publishing for the first time in the Canadian market. So not in a new format, but the first time ever. Um, they must be forthcoming, uh, so they can't have actually published yet. They must be in English language and available in Catalyst. And they must be available in Catalyst because Catalyst is our uh, recommendation platform. All uh, recommendations are made through and therefore tallied using Catalyst. So if a book isn't there, unfortunately, it can't be included. However, if you do notice that a book is missing and you really, really would like to recommend it as a Lone Star pick, please get in touch with us or someone from the Catalyst team um, and we will do our best to see what we can do. So children's books are a little easier to sort of ascertain because you can see here there's some interior images. You can see how it looks. This is the front and the cover it looks like. You've got your bibliographic information. You've got a little bit of information here. You've got your author, bi author bio so you can find it a bit more and comparable titles. So these books, of course, remind of others. So for juvenile, it's usually a little easier to kind of make your decisions. But what if you're not sure? What if it's a, a, a nonfiction adult book that you haven't read and it's on a controversial subject and you're, and you're not really sure? Well, there is a tried and true method of requesting an advanced reading copy of the book. And we're going to go over to the Lone Star catalogs now for this portion. So let's go to our nonfiction category. Oh, let's go to history. History's fun. So as you can see here, some of these will offer request an ARC. And this means that you can fill out this form uh, for either a digital or print copy of the book and ask the publisher to send you a advanced reading copy. Please add in a note always when you request. It's important to the publisher to see uh, why they're sending them out. There's usually a set number of ARCs available there, or they're only sending it for certain purposes. And by letting a publisher know why you're requesting this book, it, it increases your chances of actually receiving it. Uh, if you're using it for Lone Star purposes, please put, I'm using this for Lone Stars. Uh, publishers have been made well aware of the program, so it's a good thing to do so. So you fill this out and you send your request. You will also see here a request at NetGalley. So this, of course, takes you to NetGalley's page. Uh, you'll need to sign into your own account there, and this is completely through NetGalley, but you can also ob obtain a uh, digital art or galley um, to help you make your decision and have a, a chance to read through and see if this is a Lone Star book, in your opinion. So you can do that. However, if you're like us and your to read pile is in danger of falling over and crushing a small to mid-sized city, um, the question really becomes, can you read all of these books before the nomination period ends? And as much as we like to think uh, we library staff have superpowers, and we know that you have some, reading 
a large number of books before a predetermined end period is not always possible given how much you do in a day, um, especially if you're away from a computer or you don't have reading time worked into your daily um, schedule. So Lone Stars operates on a schedule of its own, and we did think about this issue. So I want to take you through the schedule first, and then I'll explain sort of what we kind of did to make this a little easier. So we announced the list a month before pub date, which means that recommendations can be made up until two months before pub date. So here you'll see that in January, we're releasing the January and February list, but the next list that will be coming will be March. So at the end of January, the March nomination period will close and no one can recommend books that are publishing in March for Lone Stars any longer. But this means that as soon as an eligible title is uploaded into Catalyst, it's ready to be recommended. So as soon as a publisher adds in a book or a new catalog, and that can be five or six months or a year before it publishes, it is eligible to be recommended. But again, we know that there just is not enough time in the day. So that's a lot of planning. And if you want other you know, libraries to sit up and take notice about books you've been thinking about, and that's partially why we introduced the samples and excerpts feature in Catalyst. So I will take you back to Catalyst. This is not a Lone Star eligible pick, and I chose that specifically. Uh, it was, but unfortunately, as you can see at the time of uh, the airing of this, this is passed. So the nomination period is closed, and once the nomination period closed, the button disappears, which is a pretty good way to stop people from recommending it. However, any auxiliary information that's been sent by the publisher will always be attached to the title as long as it lives in Catalyst. So in this case, a sample has been sent, um, and you will see that below covers if auxiliary information has been provided, and this can be anything ranging from samples, excerpts, uh, table of contents, reading guide, teacher's guide, they will live here and they will be clickable links. So if you click on a sample here, you will see the previewer open. You can download it for offline reading, you can print it out for in-person reading, you can uh, fit to page, you can zoom in and out, and of course you can scroll down. So if you read the first few contents and it, you get a sense that this is a book that you would you think you'd like or you think that other libraries should sit up and take notice, you can actually recommend in the same session. Uh, you just have to click X and normally a recommend button would be there and then you can recommend it. All right, so let's actually go through the recommendation process. So we have recently redone this and we've made it easier than ever before and hopefully fun. I have a lot of fun doing this. So let us try some sci-fi and fantasy. Okay, so these are books that, as you can see, are eligible. So I'm going to recommend. As soon as I hit save and close, that recommendation is saved and sent to our servers. So right now, this gives me information that I am recommending this book. This is just to know that if I decide to leave a review, which I can do so by clicking here, this book was the bestest. That review could potentially be used by a third party. Not necessarily. Uh, it's completely at your discretion whether or not you leave a review. We always appreciate them. We think it adds a little bit more insight and um, emphasis to your recommendation. But again, by no means required, completely optional. So you can save and close it. And as you can see, your recommendation has been made. And you will see that the button has changed now and has a check mark to show that this has been recommended. However, if you're coming through and you realize like, oh no, I made a typo in my recommendation, which happens, we've all done it. You can come through and you can see what your actual review was. You can see the date that you actually made the review and you can edit it. So I'm just gonna actually get rid of the review altogether because I don't think that's just as a word. Um, and I hit save and close and it's been updated so that review is no longer there. So that is how you recommend for Lone Stars. You can see it from this page. If you click into the book itself, you can see it's available here as well, and in our scroll view, you will see the button is also available with the same functionality. So because we know that there are so many books publishing at any given time, we hope that you'll use our monthly catalogs. They're always available, and it's amazing how quickly you can just fall down a clicking hole, like, oh goodness, there are so many amazing books publishing all the time. So always come and check back because they're constantly updated. Uh, now there's a few more things that you as a library user can do on Catalyst that this particular presentation isn't going to go into detail on. Things like making uh, using the notes feature or uh, how to place orders. Uh, but we do have copious amounts of help documentation and you can find all of our help documentation under help 
which will lead you to this handy dandy page and you can go through. We recommend, of course, uh, resources for libraries there. And this will give you the basic overview of how to use our library oriented, oriented features. But of course, there's always the Lone Star program information and you can find all of our help documentation as well as links to all of our social media sites and our newsletters uh, sign up form as well as our website, available all the time. So before we end this, I wanna take you through settings so you can make sure that you have everything set up to your liking. So we're gonna go over to this little icon here, the gears, and click on settings. And here we have some personal information that you can update. So here you can, of course, change your uh, name, or your password. However, if you do want to change your email address, you will have to get in touch with the Catalyst team. You also have a few email options. So these are emails, uh, our newsletters and, and updates and things like that can be sent directly to you. So the monthly newsletter is strongly recommended as it sends you all of the updated information about things that are happening in Catalyst. So when we release a major feature, when there's some changes about usage and, and things like that, uh, we highly recommend. Same with site maintenance. Uh, if Catalyst has to be down for any reason or if there's a feature update plan and it's going to be unavailable for a short, a brief amount of time, this is very useful so you just know. Weekly changes is sort of just having your alerts sent to you. Um, it depends on what you're watching but you can do that as well. And then of course beta test group which is something we would love for you to participate in. When we have a major release coming, sometimes we need people to go into our beta site and test it out to make sure that it is useful and intuitive, I guess functionally working. So testers are always appreciated. So if you'd like to be part of that test group, please click into that. And when we have a beta testing ground, we will send out a link and that will give you access. Um, and of course you can unsubscribe, but that would make us sad. Um, and of course, uh, for the alerts uh, in, we saw the alert cow, so the my page alerts, these right here. And we hit manage alerts. These are what you can choose to uh, have sent to you. So drop-ins, list price, publication date, any changes, will you'll be notified for these. And if you would like to have publishers or sales rep be able to share catalogs or notes with you, uh, you can opt into the directory like that. For contact list, it's pretty simple. You create a new list. A list, of course, is just like a like you would have in your email a option to put in a, a list name and have that auto populated so you can set that up if you're off, uh, sharing catalog between the same people. So this gives you a basic overview of how to engage with Catalyst and participate in the Lone Star program. Uh, new books and catalogs are being added daily. This is constantly being updated, so please check back frequently. And of course, you'll get change notifications uh, sent directly to you if you sign up for them, so uh, you'll be reminded. If you have any questions about Catalyst, please check our link in the help and below and in the help documentation. Um, always feel free to reach out. We love hearing from you. And if you'd like to learn more about Lone Stars, you can always visit our website, which is uh, lonestars.ca. Here we have all of our uh, archives, so you'll see the do list is always present, the, both the adult and the junior list. Yay! Um, you can download our monthly poster, and all of these are archived uh, as the books become archived, and these are great for patron use. We also have a how-to section specifically for library staff. This, again, tells you how to recommend, how to get involved. Uh, we have some materials available, our, our badges and such if you'd like to use it, and um, links to all of our social media so you can find us. We do love posting fun things about libraries, and we love interacting with library staff. Please follow us and uh, drop us a note. We also uh, send out newsletters. Uh, that's our main form of communication that announces the list and also notifies you when new catalogs are available. However, only those which you mark your preference will be uh, sent to you. So please make sure if you sign up or if you've already signed up that you update your preferences and have that uh, ready to go so you're sent content that interests you and you're not getting too much because we all hate spam and we're very conscious about spamming others. So you can sign up for our newsletter here or you can drop us a note. So signing up here, newsletter, and you can drop us a note and say hi if you'd like. Um, and this is our archives. So these are books that, these are the past lists and they're divided by year and you can click into one. Um, and this will show you the top 10 list as well as have the poster available. So yes, 
in a nutshell, this is Lone Stars. We hope that you find all the content you're looking for and we hope that you fall in love with Catalyst. Uh, overall, the message is the same. Discover books, recommend, repeat. Thanks for taking part.